Hello there. How are you doing? I hope you're enjoying the lectures so far. And uh, I'm very glad to get a very positive reviews from many of you. And uh, I have got some question from some students um, who have asked me how do they measure, how do they go about when they draw a character and they draw proportions. Now, I have shown you one way of drawing the character and measure proportions in one of the last lectures of drawing cartoony characters, but I can understand that it can be challenging when you do that, when you draw, and you want to pose your character in different poses, and you don't know how to measure proportions from different sides or from different poses. Now, there is uh, no... Um, exact way to go about. It's basically a lot about practice. So um, even very experienced uh, draw, um, the very experienced artist, they need to practice a lot to be able to get this right. And this, I know this because as an animator, when you start drawing something, when you try, start drawing a sequence of animation and you are a beginner, at some point your character is getting smaller and smaller and smaller or bigger and bigger and bigger. It means that you haven't built up this sense of, of proportions yet, this sense of how big the elements are to each other. But I'm going to show you one simple way to go about for when you draw your characters. So let me go, uh, let me start with the draw with the elephant. So if we have a head like that, again, I'm using this principle, just draw roughly uh, many circles and you see a one specific circle forming and we have one smaller circle for the body uh, Like that approximately and let's decide the line the middle line of this character around here and let's decide the line uh, the eye line of the character over here and let's decide that this point is the characters trunk and just go about and draw many many more um, just draw some some circles to define uh, the the trunk like over here and again two circles for the feet and two cir one circle for the arms and let's again define the middle point of his body here or we'll get his eyes approximately on each side of this middle line here. Of this middle line here. And uh, let him look at us a little suspiciously. What are you doing right now? What are you going to do, in, to, do to me? Well, we are just going to teach people how to draw you a little an elephant. Said, oh really well that's fine so let's get him smiling and let's draw the ears approximately here and do just two circles the way I shown you and the lectures and now let's define his arms here and his ears and his feet just define the feet where the circle is and now a if you follow the lecture so far, you will be able to draw this elephant pretty nicely and pretty quickly. So uh, if we can just define it with a black pencil and see the final character. And his eyes here and his trunk over here. Uh, and his other eye like that uh, just roughly you know this exercise well uh, that's the thing that when you draw this elephant over and over again uh, you will get the feeling uh, of how 
uh, of how big this elephant is. But every time you draw a new character, you will, uh, you will face a new unknown. You, this character will be new to you. This is um, something like I can compare it to, for, for example, for women, girls, or when you put on your, on your makeup. You know, the first time you decide on a style, you put on your makeup, your eye, eyeliner, you know, you don't really know how to do it. But the more you do it, the more you know exactly how your eyeliner is going to be. The same for guys, maybe if you do a same haircut or same shape, you know exactly how to do it. It's pretty similar actually to, to just feel the proportions. So how do you measure next time you draw this elephant? Let's say you want the elephant to lean forward and stand in one, on one leg. Uh, the thing is that what, how you measure proportions is basically try to approximately measure how many times this does this arm applies to the body. You can even measure like that. For example, if you take this measurement here and you apply it one, two, and a little bit, uh, it's, it can be confusing, but approximately try to match the, the times, how many times certain body part applies to the body or to something else. Like for example, how big is this arm uh, compared to the, to the feet? Well, it's almost as big as, as the feet. So if you want to have an elephant, um, let's say making a pirouette, uh, let's start from the body. You see that the body is approximately this size. So you measure it approximately like that. And, and uh, because I've drawn this elephant many times, you see that I've already drawn the circle pretty correctly. Now, you want to draw the head and the head will be leaned a little bit forward, which means that there is a perspective change of this head besides that the head is bigger than its body. So what you do is you measure how many times this, his body applies to the head. Approximately one and a little bit more, not exactly two times. And now because there's going to be, the head is going to be tilted forward, just make the head slightly bigger. So if you measure this proportion, just make it maybe twice as big at the head. So maybe around here. Well, that's too much because uh, you will have such a big perspective if the camera is a wide angle. You know, wide angle when you see this shot, uh, shot in a really broader, wider angle where you, everything is exaggerated in perspective. But in, in uh, cartoony characters, if you draw a character that simulates that is kind of a real, real life, real elephant, it's not going to be just as exaggerated. So let's give it maybe this volume like that of the head and let's have his arms stretched out. Now this arm is not going to be seen. Now I'm going to tilt his body. I'm going to make his one leg here and one leg here like a pirouette. And I can mark it a little bit like with, with short lines, like that. So what I'm going to do is basically assume that where does this arm is? Where, where is this arm according to his body? Well, if I, if I assume that his head is here, his head, head is tilted forward, maybe this arm, his shoulders are going to be like approximately here. So I'm going to approximate that's the thing with drawing. When you learn how to draw in these cartoony characters, there are two things you have to do next to, to pose them in different poses. You have to learn about the posture, basically human, how you humanly pose um, something. And this you can do by observation and a lot of drawing of humans. This is something I have uh, made in, one another, in another lecture drawn like figure drawing or how to draw humans from life. Because to know these different poses, you'll need to be a observant of human body and human mechanics. But anyway, so 
if his shoulders are here, then you measure approximately where his arms are and they're going to have a perspective change. So, um, so you here you have to approximate and you draw one arm here, it's going to be behind the head and another arm is going to be here and you're not going to be able to see it. And the leg, if we assume that the stomach is over here, the leg is going to be, one leg is going to be on the ground and the other leg is going to be further away in the air. And here you measure uh, the approximation of the arm and towards the leg. So if I say this arm is so big, uh, it's going to be approximately the same as the leg. But because there is a perspective change, this arm can be a little bit bigger. Perspective change, it means that the arm is closer to us than the leg is. So they're going to shift a little bit in size. That's why I mean that exactly these changes and these proportions are not as important at the moment as the way that you get used to draw really, really roughly, draw fast these characters. Because when you learn to do that, uh, the next thing you do to get the size right, it will come naturally to you the more you draw it. And that's how basically artists do it. So again, how do we find the ears? As I, come, as I talked in one lecture, you find approximate the distance from the ear to the eye considering the perspective changes. So if we have, if we have approximately a tilt like that and we have the beak over here, this means that this ear uh, next to the, uh, the, the, the distance from the ear to the beak is approximately the same like here. So we're going to have it approximately here. Just measure with your pencil and place the ear this uh, right like here. And here what you measure, how you measure the eyes is here you compare it to the beak or to something else. You, and because there is a perspective tilt, they are going to be slightly bigger here because they are closer to us. And now we draw um, a lot of other spheres to form uh, the trunk, not the beak. It's not a bird. Uh, and here we have his eyes saying, well, you did well. And the mouth is, go is we're not going to have that big chin because uh, this, the head is now tilted on downwards. So we'll have his mouth here and we'll have the other ear being behind his head. Now, as you see that the head could be a little bigger for a little too big for this character. But as you see that the proportions of this character is always related to the size of other proportions and not the size of this character. Now this character here looks a little bit bigger than this one but the proportions of his body are related to this size of the character. So this is always that you have to um, consider. It's not always the size of the character, but the proportions according to uh, the character that you draw at the moment. That's, they, that's how they have to be proportionate. It's like uh, you having yourself in a picture at the distance or you having yourself in a picture um, closer to the camera, you'll have different sizes, but the proportions of your body will be the same no matter how close or how farther away you are. It's going, that's going to be considered like perspective changes for the distance. And now let's draw the mouth here for this elephant and the ears like that. So what, how you find the right proportions is number one is practice. Number two is to find uh, supportive lines for uh, this kind of drawing, measuring proportions, 
from one side of the arm? How does it apply to, to some other parts of the body? Uh, and uh, considering plus the perspective changes. Um, so, so now you see that this elephant is kind of making a pirouette. We can add his arm here, the other arm, just to make a nice silhouette. And here, as you see, one leg is much smaller than the other leg. Why? Well, because we have to consider the perspective changes. This leg is farther away from us and this leg is closer to us. There is actually no other way of doing it. If you place your character in different poses, you have to make uh, a judgment uh, of how big the proportions are. And this thing, this thing comes when you're drawn a lot. This, this demands a lot of exercises and a lot of drawing to get used to it. One thing you have to know is that the body is smaller than the head, the feet and the arms are approximately the same size, where they are positioned according to the body and where they end according to the body and just measure the proportions like that. But considering the perspective changes, uh, some you can play with the sizes. So if something is closer to us, make it slightly bigger. It will give you more life. It will give you more correct perspective changes. If something is farther away, like this foot, make it slightly smaller. And uh, if you do character that is more um, alive, that has uh, other poses, there's just a standing elephant and just a standing pose, I mean, then uh, it will be more forgiving. It doesn't matter if you, if you maybe draw it slightly too big or slightly too small. People will accept it. They will, uh, your viewers will like the drawing and they will accept the perspective changes that you have given them, even though it might be slightly off, um, off size. Uh, so uh, I hope um, I hope this advice was useful and um, just uh, keep on drawing people, keep on exercising and uh, after a while you will not need uh, to, to measure things like that. This will be built in your system and you will be able uh, to grasp it, to see it right away, to feel it in your body, um, the movement and the size and so on. It comes with practice. So uh, that was a little extra from me. I hope you're having fun and um, have a great day. Bye.